What a momentous week in the news. Let's talk about a few of the items of interest. Let's start south of the border. On Wednesday, an out-of-control mob attacked the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C. What was striking to me is how quickly they were able to breach the perimeter and gain access inside, including to areas such as the office of Speaker Nancy Pelosi and the Senate chamber itself. It's hard for me to imagine that in this day and age, a building of the importance of the Capitol uh, was breached so easily. Video showed a breach on the ground floor window that was just glass. Any security expert worth their salt would target harden any ground floor windows with Lexan or plexiglass. Not to have done so seems highly irresponsible. Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sund tendered his resignation in the wake of the mess in Congress, and that is as it should be. The Capitol Police failed to secure the seat of government in the United States. A stunning failure. Meanwhile, closer to home, the Prime Minister seemed to tease about a surprise election call sometime this year. The impetus seems to be the Prime Minister's plan to triple the carbon tax from its current $30 per tonne to a whopping $170 per tonne by 2030. He then chided the opposition by saying they'd have a chance to fight over the issue on the hustings long before that happens, seemingly daring them to challenge him. Considering that Justin Trudeau has increased taxes on Canadians every year since he took office in 2015, that is not usually a winner for a politician. But Trudeau seems inured to public opinion and certainly to the protestations of the opposition. He has, for all intents and purposes, shut down Parliament, eliminating any debate which might be critical of him or his government. Remember when we used to be a democracy? Yet Trudeau only has a minority government after last year's election. One might have thought that would rein him in, and he might just listen to the opinions of the population. That is certainly not the case. Will he call a snap election? An interesting question. Certainly he wants a majority government, but does he take the risk? The Fraser Institute just released their Canadian Consumer Tax Index for 2020. The tax burden on Canadians is higher than ever before. We are spending 42.6 of our total income on taxes in Justin Trudeau's Canada. That compares to 36.2% of income on housing, food and clothing. Not the sort of platform I would want to fight an election upon. Finally, there is the blatant censorship of conservative speech by big tech. Yesterday, Twitter permanently closed the account of the President of the United States, which has been his primary method of communication with the American people. But it didn't end there. The social media platform, Parley, is under attack by Google, who are threatening to delist the app from their search engines and app store. Trump had 88 million followers and had tweeted over 57,000 times since assuming the office of the presidency. He received over 74 million votes in the November election. Twitter has just given the finger to half the country. But it's not just in the U.S. It is universal. In the true north world alone in the past 24 hours, Twitter has eliminated over 300 followers from me. The True North account is down about a thousand followers, as is Andrew Lawton. And make no mistake, if it can happen to Donald Trump, it can happen to you or anyone, for that matter. That is a frightening situation. For True North, I'm Leo Knight.